thank you so much everyone uh, for joining me i'm back with another can do challenge interviews and um i'm here i'm excited to have uh, pierre who's going to <laughs> pronounce his last name because i may uh, get it wrong sometimes i know now i know how to pronounce your first name yes. um i've been connected with pierre through edward zia's network and i'm grateful for that forever grateful for the people that i've managed to meet in a few months so um as I've said before, my platform, I've been bringing people that are, are impacted by sickle cell disease. And uh, I just want uh, people, especially there are those people that most of them are on my platform to see that there are people out there changing lives and doing good on this earth. And so I thought Pierre was one of them that ticks that box for me to just encourage others. So for those people that don't know you, Pierre, how can you describe yourself? So please let me know who you are and uh, something about you. First of all, Agnes, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I just want to thank you for your time and your commitment and also your audience. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for taking the moments to, to listen in that your commitment to listening is, is valuable. Um, Piero Mardesic. So Mardesic is my surname. Uh, a little bit about me. My father's Croatian, my mother's Filipino. Um, they met back in the 50s. I moved to Australia, or my father escaped Yugoslavia, moved to Australia. Um, it makes me fruit salad. I'm, I'm a mixture. My sister's also a mixture um, of beauty, love, kindness, peace. And we all have our things. Uh, when I was younger, I was classed as dyslexic. Uh, I was told that I was ADD. I've got a two decades of addiction, but I've also got two decades of wonderful experience as an exceptional leader across a multitude of industries. And when you add my energetic style, you may think that I'm Italian because of the way that I throw my hands all around the air. I've been called arrogant. I've been called ignorant. Um, but the main thing is, is I'm a father of three beautiful boys and I'm just passionate about what I do. And that is helping people with addiction. It's one aspect. I help people, I partner with senior executives and CEOs and people of influence to live and lead an exceptional life, personally and professionally. Now, why is that important to me or how did I get into it or what do I really brand myself as? And that is, I call myself a maverick coach. A maverick coach, a maverick is someone who is an individual who's uh, un unauthentic, uh, sorry, un, un unclassed. I have my own style. I do things my own way through all of my experience. Why do I do this? Because of the people that I see that are hiding behind the facade of fear. It really is fear. Afraid to unearth the truth behind the lies. Uh, afraid and to unearth the decisions that they really must make that are truly uncomfortable. And I like to frame it in a, a mantra, conquer the uncomfortable to unleash your potential. That's what I do. That's really good. That's really good. Um, thank you so much for that. You know, something that's stuck out for me, um, one thing that you are a migrant just like me, and that's just... Uh, Something that I relate to, because a few weeks ago, I, I had a chance to sit down with Anya and uh, I just like how, you know, I don't know about you, your parents were migrants. I'm a first generation migrant in this country. So at least you didn't have to face those challenges that they did, but I'm pretty sure they gave you, they told you those stories, just how it was for them. So that just for me also just part of me just feels that you know if you're a migrant in this country you can still make it and that we are seeing that but one thing that also stuck out for me that you say that you are dyslexic so just tell me exactly what that is for those people that don't know and uh, how did you overcome that so dyslexia takes many forms if it's something that you can understand you know how to work with it rather than against it in other words, when I read, the, the letters for me on the page jumble. So the letters and the numbers. So I might read a two as a five. I might read a four as a H. I might read where as in how instead of 
where. And then sometimes I'll write uh, there as in over there, I'll write it as in their home. So the difference, it's just the way the, the letters jumble. Now, that was how it was explained to me when I was 14. Did I take any notice? No. I got to wear special glasses like Elton John and Britney Spears and Michael Jackson, like all the coloured lenses. Um, I actually thought I was a superstar. I thought this is great. Like I got to stand out from the crowd. Um, and that was part of my, I guess you could say, growing up because I learned how to hide behind that facade and I thought that dyslexia was a problem that I needed to mask. But then, you know, some of the kids actually are challenged with this at school and, and some, sometimes it's not picked up and you see that so some of the kids who actually just maybe leave school because it's so hard for them. Uh, was it was this picked up at school for you? Yes, yes. Or did your yes. parents actually just encourage? You? And and it's still is it still like ongoing, or have you worked on it to sort of have something to to work with? Okay, so year four, year four, it was picked up in year four. Um, I used to go to a speech therapist to learn how to pronounce my words properly. Now, has this been? part of my journey yes because now i believe that i'm a public speaker i believe that i can articulate my words correctly i believe that i can explain my story well so story showing as well as storytelling why this is so important for me and why do i want to make sure that this is not ongoing is because i take the time to learn what dyslexia is helping me with so i get to slow down i get to uh, you know, read twice, speak once. Uh, when I'm taking notes, I get to write, I get to slow down, I get to clearly process the notes. Now, part of dyslexia that I was explained to is, it was about concentration. So the white, the white background, so the white paper with the black writing, the white paper would be too bright and it stood out above the black writing. So I got to wear the coloured lenses. Now, why am I telling you this? The more that I read now, the more that I slow my reading down and I speak out loud, I get to hear the story better. And when I was a child, when it got picked up and I went to speech therapy, is because I didn't know how to say words. Therefore, I didn't want to speak in class. I wanted to tell jokes. So what I did was I became the class clown because I was yeah, hiding. Yeah. So I was hiding that it was a problem because I didn't want to read out loud because I would make so many mistakes, but then I would become an attention seeker. So I started telling jokes and I started becoming the class clown. And that's when my teachers started to pick it up because they, they mentioned that he doesn't, he doesn't like reading in front of the class and and yeah, that's how I got picked up. And that's how I use it now to my advantage as I've learned to slow down when I speak and I can really put the words together properly and it comes across more empowering. Wow, that's just so powerful. I, I really hope somebody who's the experience that or experiencing that right now can see this because I've been following your journey and you're just so, so inspiring. And, um, you know, and Thank you're you. so good on Clubhouse, which <laughs> Thank you. you're really using, a, you're killing that platform. I've been on a few times, so you're so good with what you do. But also something that stood out for me, tell me about, briefly about your addiction and how you've turned that around to help other people. Okay, so this is one aspect uh, that I conquered and championed. And that was uh, when I was 10, I was, in, I was, I was introduced to adult movies uh, and not purposefully. I walked past and, and my father was watching in his downtime. And I, I later on in life realized that that was, his, that was his way of relaxing. I didn't understand it at the, child, at the time when I was 10. But the correlation between me wanting to watch more and understand it was when, when I was a child, I was called naughty. I was just a naughty boy, right? I used to always muck around and do th silly things, you know, like I was a child. 